And in this video, we're going to create a polygon base mesh that we're going to send over to ZBrush. Uh, so here is a basic shape of the uh, pillar with an object sitting on top. And the end result we're going to aim for is something uh, sculpted like this with an um, interesting kind of pillar that is sitting on. Whether it's a bust of a character or whatever object, it's going to be um, something on top of some kind of pillar. We're going to create some texture maps and some normal maps. Uh, we'll do that in a couple later videos, but this is what we're going to be aiming for. So if I jump back over here to Maya, we can see that uh, we have a pillar and an object sitting on top. So in order to send this into ZBrush, there's a couple things we want to do to it. Uh, so let me start over with this. Let's start over with a box. And if I take this box, and to give you an idea of what ZBrush is going to do, when it smooths it, if we go over to Mesh, Smooth, uh, you'll see that it rounds off all the corners and we get this. If I set the division levels a little bit higher, let's say 2, you can see that it smooths it a little more. It makes it gradually makes it smoother and smoother and smoother the higher you um, create it, put a smooth on there. Uh, what we want to do to keep those hard edges though, we want to do a couple things. So let me start over and put a new box down here. And let's start generating a basic shape for this pillar. So let's go to scale, I'll make it a little wider, I'll make it a little taller, pull it up here, and let's add a little bit of detail. So let's go into face mode, grab this, and extrude it down. So I'll pull this down so it about hits the grid area. And then I'll select through it to grab these all these outer edges and sides. I'll do extrude again. And let's do this scale. So I click on scale and then I'll scale on the two axes is here. And it kind of pulls it out so we have a little bit of a base that kind of makes it look realistic and standing up. Let's repeat this. Uh, G to repeat the last command. I can pull this straight up. And let's select through it again. And G to repeat the last command. And I'll scale outwards. So click on scale first and then pull it this way. And make it something like that. So I have a go back to object mode. I have a little bit of a top for it and I have a base. Uh, so we have a little bit of a structure. But if I go back to mesh and smooth, it still doesn't fix the problem. It keeps rounding. Uh, so in order to retain the hard edges, we want to do a couple different things. We can either add edge loops uh, close to the edges, or we can bevel everything. Um, so I'm going to try going with the bevel option first. It's usually quick and easy. If I take this whole object and I go mesh, or edit mesh, bevel, and I check the settings. Uh, the, right now the bevel is set to 0.5, so let's try that. And you can see that it, at 0.5 it works pretty decent. It, it puts an edge around everything. Uh, so it doubled up all the edges. If I click off there, you can see that it still mostly holds a shape. But if I go back to mesh and smooth it, now you can see that it rather holds a shape pretty well. If I want to go a little bit further, uh, I could let's undo that. And instead of doing um, segments of one, I could do a segments of two, press apply again, and now it doubles it up. So now it added two more lines to the original line. So if I go to smooth now, you can see that it really holds that hard, sharp crispness. And so that's what you would get when you put it in ZBrush. If you bevel the edges and put a lot of polygons close to each other, you'll be able to retain hard, sharp edges. Um, alternatively, aside from the bevel option, because uh, bevel will also add extra bevels here, and we don't need bevel lines there. We don't need bevel lines on top of here. So it adds a little bit extra that we don't necessarily need. Uh, we could always go to uh, mesh tools, insert edge loop. And if I drill an edge loop, starting on this edge and slide it up here, uh, put one right next to it. Um, and let's say I put one on this edge right here, and one on this edge. It should hold its shape pretty well. So let's go back to object mode, mesh smooth, and you'll see that this top area has a very sharp line, and this bottom area doesn't. If I control Z that, and let's say I put mesh, oops, insert edge loop, and I don't put it all the way at the very edge. Let's say I put it up a little bit higher. Uh, you'll see the difference now. When I go mesh smooth, it's a little more closer, but not as sharp as that. So the closer I can put a line to a, to a corner, uh, the sharper I'll get. So if I take that line out, and replace it with one much closer to the edge, and then go back to object mode and mesh smooth. 
you can see it holds that edge much better. So the closer you put lines to each other, the sharper you're going to get on your edges. So whereas the bevel kind of did it uniformly to everything, uh, you can selectively go through and put your own corners in there. So if I wanted to finish that up real quick, insert edge loop. Let's say I want to put one here to hold this corner and this one, and then I might as well sharpen up the corners. So I'll put one here, put one here, and I have two now at all the corners. I could go even uh, more uh, refined. Um, if I go back to here and go smooth, let's check this out. Smooth. Uh, it has a little bit of a roundness to it. If I push the, um, the poly smooth surface up a little bit higher on the divisions, um, you can see it, it has a little bit of roundness. If I want that sharpness to it, uh, I can add extra edge loops in there. So it kind of depends on how far you want to go with it and how crisp you want things. The sharper you make it, it makes it a little tricky to kind of uh, paint that out and smooth it out the corner if you want it to be not so sharp in ZBrush, but either way it can work. Um, the next thing we want to take into account, let's close that, assuming I want to keep it this way, uh, is that turn off the poly smooth. We don't necessarily need the smooth on there before sending it to ZBrush, so we can leave that off. Uh, the next step is we want to make sure that we have um, a lot of smaller squares. Everything's pretty consistently even. You can see this is one giant piece, so we're not going to get a whole lot of resolution here uh, compared to something like this area, which has more lines condensed. So we want to try and um, make things more uniform. So insert edge loop like I've been doing. I'll cut one right to the center, and then I'll cut one in between there and there. You can see we're kind of getting a rectangle shape. Uh, so let's cut one down the center here, and now we're kind of back at a square shape again. But we could probably use a little more, um, I guess, roundness. Uh, these sides look like they have a little more rectangular shape to them, and these also. So if I want to have a little more uh, square uniformness, I could make this a little more square shaped. So ZBrush will do this automatically, but it's a good idea to try and keep things as square as possible. So I put some more into here. Alright, so now you can see everything's mostly consistently square shaped all around. So that should help hold the shape a little bit uh, better and make it more uniform resolution. Let's test one more time. Smooth. And you can see that this is the shape I'm getting when I press smooth. The polygons are nice and square shaped and uh, evenly proportional, so it'll look really nice in ZBrush. So let's undo that. So I have the original piece right here. Let's name this the pillar. And I don't need the transformations anymore, so let's go modify freeze transformations. And I don't need the history anymore, so let's go edit delete by type history. So that's nice and clean, and we could go into the game engine at this point, but I'm going to send this to ZBrush and create a little more interest to it. And now let's put something on the top of this. So let's go start with um, a circle, and I'll use this to create the character bust. Um, this will be the head, and all you need is a basic shape to get you started in ZBrush. Uh, you can build straight into ZBrush and not even start with the base mesh, but this method kind of builds the basic shape for you. All right, so if, I'm, if I have a head now, I'm just gonna need the body. So let's go right click, go to face mode, and select out the bottom half, and delete those. Then let's go to edge mode, double click one of the edges, wrong one, and that uh, grabs the bottom perimeter for us. Let's go extrude downwards, and I'm going to click this setting to put it back to world coordinates. And I can pull straight down on the green, try and keep things in square shapes, just kind of like this already is a square shape. And let's G to repeat the last command. Now let's pull a little further. All right, and then let's pull it down, and let's scale it using the world coordinates on the red axis so it starts to become the shoulder area. And I can probably pull a little further oops, uh, that way, then G to repeat the last command. Let's pull it on world coordinates straight down, scale them out a little more this way, and pull them that way. And just kind of keep repeating that until you start to create the general shape of the character. Start pulling that in, pull this this way, and scale it back out a little more. So we have the chest area, and let's go 
loose one more time. Pull that down, pull it forwards, scale it in, and scale it this way, and pull it back. Alright, so we have kind of a basic shape for our character. Uh, you want to use all the same objects, so all these were extruded, they're not separate boxes, because when you have separate boxes you're going to have a seam between the two of them in ZBrush. There is a way to resolve that also, uh, but generally you want to make sure your object is one solid piece when you click on it. Uh, not necessarily combining it, but it's um, separate. I mean, it's one piece uh, built that way. So let's move this down until it's sitting on top of the pillar. And kind of center. Well, I guess he's kind of centered, but I'll slide him back a little more. Okay, we'll call that good enough. Um, and then again, same thing. Let's clear out the uh, transforms and the history. Everything is mostly square shaped. The bottom could probably use one extra uh, edge loop. So insert edge loop, put one there, kind of squares it out a little better. All right, object mode. Modify, freeze transformations, edit, delete by type, history. So I clean that up and let's call this bust. All right, so we've got the bust and the pillar. They're two separate objects at the moment. You could combine these by going to mesh combine um, and import it as one object into ZBrush, but we don't, um, it, if you have two separate objects, kind of like in Photoshop with layers, you can turn one off and this way you can, um, just sculpt the bust for a, for a while and then turn the bust off and you can sculpt the pillar without having the bust on there. So it's nice to have the option to turn one or the other off and and keep um, a lot of uh, not clogged up area workspace. You can see everything. All right, so we're going to take uh, these and we're going to export these into ZBrush. Uh, when you go over here to file export selection, uh, you may or may not have an OBJ export. If you don't have the OBJ export, you go over here to Windows, Settings or Preferences, and down to Plugin Manager. Sometimes it may not be loaded. Uh, if you start from the top and scroll down until you're in the O section, so O for OBJ export, and click on Loaded and Auto Load if you wanted to keep coming up. And that should give you the option to uh, have the OBJ export. Once you've clicked on that, you can press Close. And let's go over to File, Export Selection now. And I'm going to call this the Pillar. And I have another folder for this, uh, ZBrush Demo. All right, so this is the Pillar, Export Selection. And let's do one more. File, Export Selection, and call this the Bust. Export that one as well. Uh, and ZBrush will remember these two locations, so when it pops them into ZBrush, they'll both click into place. We'll be using the uh, subtools for that. Uh, there should be um, a material file and an object file. You don't need the material files. We're just going to be using the objects. If you want to delete these, you can. Um, they're not necessary for what we're doing. Uh, as long as you have the two OBJ files, the objects, that's all we're going to need for ZBrush. And that should cover the uh, tutorial so far. The next step is going to be uh, putting these in ZBrush.